Welcome to investigation 1.2. In this investigation, we're going to be connecting ideas of AX plus BY equals C and Y equals MX plus B. So we're going to be looking at slope-intercept form of equations um, and what's called standard form of linear equations. So when we do this, we're going to be looking at these two formats and finding similarities and when they're best used and that sort of thing. So let's get started with a couple of words worth knowing. Our very first word is slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form is the one we all know and love, y equals mx plus b. And in slope-intercept form, we can find the slope and the y-intercept. It's nice and easy, hence the name slope-intercept form. As well with slope-intercept form, we can see directly how variables depend on each other. So we can see how x or how y is dependent on x. So we can see that we have an independent versus a dependent variable. So anything that we put in for x, we directly get out of y. So that is one form of an equation that we're going to be looking at. As well, we're going to be looking at standard form, and that is ax plus by is equal to c. This is another form of a linear equation. And this directly relates two quantities that are moving by x and y towards a constant c. So we're looking at how two quantities can change and how the like main number will still stay the same. So we're still looking at a linear equation. However, we're looking at how those two variables interact with each other to create that fixed constant values. So in this case, we're looking at two variables x and y and how they sort of mix to create a constant c. These both of these equations y is equal to mx plus b and ax plus by equals c are linear functions. They describe lines. There is a, an x value that we put in and we always get one y value out and that sort of thing. The only time we don't is when we don't have, um, or when we have just x equals something, but that's not y equals mx plus b, so that's not necessarily following the same scenario. But they describe lines. Linear functions describe lines. So let's take this idea and run with it. The first part of this um, investigation will have you just trying to find similarities between um, standard form and linear equation form. And so we are going to play around with that exact same thing. We're going to be looking at slope-intercept form versus standard form and how to move between the two. So very first, we're going to move between standard form and slope-intercept form. So we currently have this written in standard form. If we wanted to, we can identify our a term, which is our 5x, our b term, which is 2y, and our c, which is 9. So we can see where those coefficients, a, b, and c, are in our e equation, and we can identify the various terms that they relate to. But we also know that we'd like to get this eventually in this format, y is equal to mx plus b. So really what we're doing is we're solving our equation for y. We're moving everything here around so we get y is equal to everything else. So let's start off and do that. We need to get y by itself. That means I'm going to move everything around y to the other side of the equation. So I'm going to start off by subtracting 5x. I'm subtracting 5x because it's more close or it's not as close 
to the y value. If I start further out, I'm going to have less of a mess later on. So I end up getting 2y is equal to 9 minus 5x. And then after that, I'm going to divide by 2. Ooh, that should say 2y, not 2x. 2y. And now I'm going to divide by 2. And when I divide by 2, I need to divide by 2 on everything. Because if I don't, I'm not keeping the proportionality of my line. Lines are all about a sort of similar proportionality between the rise and the run. And if we don't keep that, we're going to end up screwing things up a little bit. So we have y is equal to 9 minus 5x divided by 2. And one last way that we can write this, so it looks like y equals mx plus b, so we can see an individual slope and we can see an individual y-intercept, is we can finish this up by saying y is equal to 9 divided by 2, divided by 2, write that properly, sorry, minus 5 divided by 2, x. So now we can see our slope, our m, and we can see our y-intercept, b. Our slope is negative 5 halves, and our y-intercept is 9 halves. This isn't a very pretty equation, but at the same time, not a lot of equations in real life are very pretty. So let's just deal with it. It's kind of fun. So let's do a little practice problem so we can see all this working out again. Again, we have our y equals, or we have our standard form. So we can identify our a coefficient, our b coefficient, and our c term. We can see what all of those things are. I suggest always doing that, making sure that, like, am I in standard form? Am I in slope-intercept form? Am I, like, partially in between? Identify that each time. So our next step after that, we need to subtract 3x from both sides. And we'll have 2y left over is equal to negative 4 minus 3x. After I've done that, I need to now touch on my y and divide by 2 on both sides. So I get y is equal to negative 4 minus 3 over uh, 3x divided by 2. And very last step, I'm going to make these numbers a little sweeter, a little easier to look at. So we get y is equal to negative 4 divided by 2, which is negative 2, and negative 3 divided by 2 is negative 3 over 2, or I could write that as 1.5. Now if I wanted to, I could also take this a step further and actually write it in slope-intercept form, like where it looks like y equals mx plus b, and that means all of this right here in the back is going to move up front, so we get negative 3 over 2x, and 2x is, or minus 2x is going to come into the back. So we get y is equal to negative 3 over 2x minus 2. So our slope, we could say our slope is equal to negative 3 over 2, and my y-intercept is equal to negative 2. So we also need to be able to move from slope-intercept form into standard form. So we can see that this equation is currently in slope-intercept form we need to move it into standard form. So we need to get this to look like ax plus by is equal to c, whereas as of right now I can see what my y-intercept is and I can see what my slope is. So we need to actually just do a little bit of math. Let's first, we need to get essentially everything that is x or y on the left-hand side of our equation. So this time, instead of solving for a specific variable, instead of solving for y, we're going to solve for a constant. We're going to solve for our b. We want to get that all by itself this time. So let's do just that. I'm going to add 8x to both sides. So I'll get 8x plus y, and that's because my y is positive, that's why I'm adding it, is equal to 2. And now it's in standard form. There's nothing else I need to do. I could technically, if I really wanted to, I could probably divide both sides by 2, and I could play around with that, but it's really unnecessary. Um, 
But what I can see here is my A term is 8, my B term is invisible, so my B term is 1, and my C is 2. So I can see that it's now in standard form. Let's do a quick practice problem so we can play around with that. Ooh, this one looks a little trickier. It looks like, as of right now, I have some fractions. Whenever I see fractions in my slope-intercept form, that leads me to believe I could probably deal, I could probably do more than one step when I get it into standard form. So it's always nice to have your constant be a whole number. That's what I'm getting at. So we want our C to be a whole number instead of just a fraction. So we're going to play around with that. So to start off with, we're going to add 2 thirds x to both sides. So we get 2 over 3x plus, oops, plus y is equal to 4 thirds. And now here's that last step. Let's make this not be a fraction. Let's make it be a whole number. So how do I get 4 thirds? How do I turn it into a whole number? Well, I could multiply it by 3 on this side. If I multiply one side by 3, I need to multiply everything else on the other side by 3 as well. I need to keep that proportionality. So that means I'm going to be distributing a 3 into both of these terms. So I will end up with 3 times 2 thirds x plus 3 times my y is equal to 4 thirds times 3. So now we need to do a little bit of simplification. We're going to simplify our 3's on this left side with this 2 thirds x. So we just get 2x plus 3y is equal to one last little bit of simplification. We're going to simplify those 3's and so we end up with a 4. So here is my final standard form of this equation. We can identify our A, we can identify our B, and we can identify our C in this one. Nice and fun. I want you to play around with this investigation, play around with moving stuff from standard form to Y is slope intercept form and slope intercept form to standard form. Have a good time doing it, and if you have any questions, make sure you ask. This stuff is not particularly, particularly easy, so make sure you ask questions. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you later.